Keep your eyes wide open. Unprecedented images, surprising measurements, and numerical coincidences that feel a little too neatly aligned to be accidental. In the past few days, new data about the interstellar object Atlas shook the community, and one of the most outspoken defenders of its anomaly, Avi Loeb, went straight to the point, there are questions that were publicly minimized and signals we still don't know how to explain. But what exactly happened? Why do so many indicators contradict the ordinary comet narrative? And the question everyone wants to hear, could Atlas somehow be planning to interact with Jupiter? Let's break this down. Number by number, hypothesis by hypothesis, as far as logic and the calculations expressed in words can take us. The lost promise of the briefing. Why the press didn't tell the whole story. When NASA organized the briefing to present images of Atlas, many expected a moment of mystery and discovery. Instead came a moderating narrative. It's a comet, nothing extraordinary. Loeb criticizes this stance, according to him, the briefing focused on lowering expectations, instead of presenting the real questions the data had already raised. In his transcription of the Q&A, he highlights that the public images were largely unrevealing, except for details ignored by the officials. For example, the HIRAS image captured by the Mars orbiting probe showed something unusual, an extended glow ahead of the object in the direction of its motion, and not simply toward the central star of our system, as we'd expect from pockets of sublimating ice. This raised the hypothesis that what we see ahead might be a beam or plume that functions very differently from what we know in ordinary comets. So, why minimize it? If there are anomalies, they deserve to be highlighted, and if we don't actively look for them, we won't find them. That is the central critique, and it's what we will examine. The seemingly millimetric trajectory adjustment, Jupiter's hill radius, and the numerical coincidence, here comes one of the most explosive pieces of the puzzle. Loeb outlines a simple orbital mechanics calculation. Jupiter's gravitational sphere of influence, the so-called hill radius, and the forecast of Atlas's minimum approach point in March 2026. The numbers? Jupiter's hill radius on that day is approximately 53.502 million kilometers. The predicted minimum approach of Atlas is 53.445 million kilometers, with an uncertainty of roughly 0.06 million. In other words, the values match within one part in 1,000 and within statistical margins. This coincidence reaches the order of 1 in 26,000, depending on how one measures the total orbital space. What does this mean in practical terms? If Atlas slightly adjusted its speed during perihelion, and there are measurements of non-gravitational acceleration precisely in this period, then the result was an almost perfect tap on the edge of Jupiter's sphere of influence. If it were an extremely unlikely accident, fine. But if Atlas had minimal propulsion to direct that approach, then we would be looking at behavior compatible with a vehicle intending to deposit something into Jupiter's orbit satellites, probes, devices at equilibrium points, anything. Loeb argues that the magnitude of the adjustment matches the measured value of the non-gravitational acceleration. A provocative question, what if it's not a coincidence? The catalog of anomalies, from the forward jet to the anomalous nickel. Before reaching the technological hypothesis, we need to look at the inventory of strange signals accompanying Atlas, atypical chemical composition, extreme polarization, directed jets, and more. Avi Loeb organized a list of anomalies by probability, a list that summarizes why the scientific community is divided between exotic comet and something that requires alternative explanations. I will recap these anomalies in full with brief practical comments. The recap follows Loeb's original structure. 1. An abrupt change in trajectory orientation occurring with too much precision to be attributed to known natural perturbations. 2. An emission pattern forming an anti-tail directed toward the central star of our system with alignment that cannot be justified solely by the observer's position. 3. A nucleus with density incompatible with objects of the same category moving far too quickly for the estimated mass. 4. The improbable coincidence of passing near Mars, Venus, and Jupiter as if its route had been favored by an alignment that does not occur spontaneously. 5. 
A metallic composition with an abnormally high concentration of nickel, far above levels expected for bodies similar to O. cometa comparativo. 6. A gas release with extremely low water content, presenting a ratio so reduced that it defies typical behavior for objects of this nature. 7. An optical response that remains intensely negative, something not seen in any record of known natural objects. 8. The point of origin matching the same celestial region associated with the famous WOW signal, a geographic repetition noted even by skeptics. 9. A sudden brightness increase accompanied by an unusual bluish hue, surpassing the reference color adopted by instruments. 10. Jets whose intensity would require an energy absorption capacity greater than the nucleus should withstand, creating a discrepancy hard to ignore. 11. A non-gravitational acceleration implying significant mass loss, without any visible cloud or trail to justify it. 12. Emission beams that stayed oriented in the same direction over enormous distances, without the natural oscillation expected from rotation. What we still haven't done and should have. Even with all known anomalies, one point can't be ignored. We lack dedicated and continuous observations. The data we have are fragmented, collected by different instruments, on different days, using methodologies that don't match. For an object this unusual, that is insufficient. Most images used to draw conclusions come from telescopes operating opportunistically, not in coordinated campaigns. Without systematic spectroscopy, complete time series, and multiband monitoring, we keep simply reacting, not genuinely investigating. This creates the false impression that we know enough, when in practice, we have enormous gaps. If something strange is happening with Atlas, these gaps are precisely the space where artificial or natural explanations could hide. Before discarding any hypothesis, the minimum requirement would be a global, continuous observation campaign. And so far, no one has done that beyond natural, thrusters, beam shields, and practical objectives. With this inventory on the table, the technological hypothesis emerges not as fantasy, but as a coherent interpretation of several simultaneous signals. Fine trajectory adjustment, collimated and stable jets, metallurgy atypical composition, and non-trivial luminous behavior. Loeb suggests that directed jets could be thrusters that, after perihelion, point toward the central star of our system to use the gravitational field as a slingshot, a maneuver designed to gain speed and adjust course, not mere gas expulsion. Another practical and fascinating hypothesis, the forward beam from Atlas may not be a trail of material, but a micrometeoroid mitigation system, streams of particles or charged light that ionize or deflect small debris before they hit the surface at extremely high relative velocities. In simple terms, an interstellar craft could use a laser or particle beam to electrify and deflect small hazards, protecting sensitive structures. Loeb mentions this possibility in his Q&A. And if the objective is to deposit devices at Jupiter? Devices left near the hill radius, for example, at points L1 and L2, would need only small impulses to enter stable orbit. If Atlas reached that zone intentionally, we might later detect objects around Jupiter that were not sent by us. Juno and other human probes could help in that search. Counter arguments and the sensible scientific path. Before discarding the natural hypothesis, it's fair to recall that alternative interpretations have costs. They must explain why Atlas displays this exact combination of attributes simultaneously. Cautious observers remind us that the universe has enough variance to produce strange objects by chance and that additional data, especially detailed spectroscopy of the jets and thermal observations, for example with Webb, are essential. Loeb himself says the correct approach is to actively search for technological signatures rather than declare absence simply because no one looked. Ahead of us lies a valuable window. Combined observations from ground-based telescopes, Webb, Mars, orbiting probes, and Jupiter-bound missions in the coming weeks and months. This flood of data must be treated like gold because only with that can we raise or dismiss hypotheses with confidence. Atlas forces us to choose. Will we follow the comfortable script of automatic explanation, it's just a comet, or will we investigate without preconceptions? 
Avi Loeb has been clear. There is a collection of anomalies that do not add up to a simple story and call for directed investigation. If Atlas is natural, it will be an extraordinary comet and rich with lessons about distant stellar systems. If it is technological, well, that would change humanity's narrative about company in the cosmos forever. And to finish with the question that fills everyone's mind, are you ready to look both ways down the street as Einstein suggested? Science needs that double glance, and we, the curious, need to follow every new image, every spectrum, every velocity measurement with the attention this event deserves. The story of Atlas is just beginning. Share your theories, bring your doubts, and of course comment and share this video to fuel the discussion. Let's keep our eyes on the sky and our minds open.